I'll start with a quick review about this course slash book. I'm going to refer to, to this as a book, how the earth works. So I'll give this one three stars, a high three even. The only reason is it's a little too long. So it's about 24 hours worth of listening, a little too long. And some parts of it, let's say about volcanoes, there is way too much details about volcanoes that it could chop down and way too much details at the end about weather and about oceans and things like that. There is not enough information. So I think he focused on the wrong thing for too long. So either you can shrink it down, everything shrink down a little bit, or talk about more about other things, which would make it even longer. So I would not recommend. Other than that, he's a really good professor, easy to understand, straight to the point, and fascinating most of the time. I learned some, some inf definitely some information out of this. Some parts are a little complicated to understand. I think you could do a little better, better job at explaining some concepts or how do they connect. But overall, he is a really good professor. Let's see the notes. Deep inside the earth, there is an enormous pressure and no empty spaces since everything is fluid and pressured. So because of the pressure and the fluidness, there is no empty space. Pressure causes heat due to collisions between atoms. What happens when there is pressure, atoms are colliding and that produces heat. Some of the continents actually fit together and we can see that they were one part before. So some of the continents were one part and we can see that they actually fit together from above, the shape. When two continents collide, they form mountains. So how mountains are, most mountains are, it's a collision and everything is rising uh, from, from different points. Some of the continents are connected underwater. So there is a connection underwater between some of the continents. We don't see it, but it is. The matter we are made of is as old as the universe. We are made out of atoms, which are older, and we're made out of stars, I think. This is one of the, this is a quote from I don't know who, but we're made out of stars, literally. Planets that are close to the sun contain metals and farthest from the sun tend to contain rocks. Forgot the reasoning, there is uh, or reasons well, what's going on there. But those are those ones that are closer to the sun have more iron and farther they have rocks. Cold climate. Oh, I think there's also a no, um, go back to this one. It's about something that the closer to the sun, it's a little more liquid, but this is not related. Back to this one. Cold climate can hold on gas easier than hot environment. If it is, if it has enough gravitational force. So cold, cold climate can hold gas easier. So for example, different stars, if it has enough gravitational force, if it's colder, it's easier to hold on, on, on those gases. The higher the pressure, higher the temperature. So more pressure there is, higher the temperature. We had this thing with the atoms, collision of the atoms. Rain is a bit acidic, which dissolve rock over time. That's what happened with rain. It's a little bit acidic and that dissolve rock. The fastest we can fall through the atmosphere is about 120. I forgot if it's kilometers or, or miles. Gravity and force of hair will cancel out because what happens there is gravity. So you would accelerate, but there is also the friction and the hair that carries you the buoyancy force of air. So they cancel out at around 120. I forget which one is. Oceans are actually deeper, closer to the continent and more shallow in the middle. I found that quite, quite interesting. They're actually shallower in the middle and not closer to the continent, even though you think otherwise because there is the shore. So it, it is true that closer to the closer to the coast or to the shore, it is shallow, but so it's going deep and then it becomes shallower. The ocean floor is covered with layers of dirt, but underneath is not smooth. So there is 
mountains in some way underneath that dirt. The ground will break where it's the weakest. That's what happens in uh, earthquakes. The ground will break where it's the weakest, the weakest parts, and that's how the fault is going towards or along. Mountains often formed by collisions of continents. Oh, I spoke a little bit about it. The collision creates continents or mountains. LA is basically not the most dangerous city in terms of earthquakes. Seattle is the most dangerous. There is, it's a, in a subduction zone and Seattle is actually more dangerous than LA. Usually people think LA is. Only about 10% of per precipitation falls on land. Most of it falls on the ocean. Only 10%, that's not a lot. There are minerals in water which leaves a mark when it evaporates. There's all kinds of minerals in water and we can see that when water evaporates, there is some white residue left. Oceans are salty because of the minerals that water dissolves. All those minerals go back to the ocean and all those minerals are salty, some of them. Warm hair contain more water than cold hair can hold more water. When warm hair meet cold surface, clouds tend to form. So we have hot hair with more water or hum humidity in some way and when that meet a cold surface, it evaporates and clouds, not evaporates, but clouds, it, it condensed and clouds tend to form. And that's what happens sometimes in mountains. There is hot hair comes and then on the mountains a little colder and it, it condenses and there is clouds. The jungle soil is actually almost empty of nutrients. All live there and working hard to prevent nutrients to fall into the ground as they would suck in there. All the nutrients get sucked out of there already because there is so much life in there. All the nutrients are getting sucked out. Therefore, there is all kinds of uh, tricks that those live if de developed in order to prevent something to fall into the ground because when it does, it will eaten or stacked out. Something will use that nutrients. So it's valuable nutrients. Mountains tend to suck all the water and therefore deserts tend to follow. So that's back to the clouds thing. There is clouds and it all falls down because there is those clouds and condensed and it all falls. So they suck all the water. And after mountains, usually if there is a big strain or line of mountains usually it follows by a desert desert because all the water sucked out there is no water left afterwards changes in air pressure cause winds as it balances out so i want to there is high pressure and low pressure and those trying to balance out which creates the wind freezing and throwing and thawing not for in throwing thawing has a major effect on the environment such as rocks. So freezing and thawing over and over and over again, that transformation cause cracks or all kinds of problems, especially for rocks. I think in Chicago, they have a huge problem with that because it's it extended and shrink back and forth and that creates some problems. Waves break when the bottom moves slower than the top. So the bottom meets the floor, basically, the floor of the ocean, but the top keeps on moving faster, so it breaks. Glaciers can carry rocks across oceans. So the glacier moves around, but there is some rocks in it because it just got frozen and that moves around rocks. So it's kind of like a shipping container in some way. Greenhouse gases trap heat. That's what, what they do because there is those gases. They trap the heat because it cannot escape. Huge rates of mutations. I don't know, that's supposed to be huge. 
it's um, tied with there. Huge rates of mutations can lead to many defects. Lower rates of mutations can lead to lower, low adaptability. Neither of them is good. If you have high rates of mutations too far, it can, or too many, it can create defect. If it's too low, there is no adaptability. So there is like that Goldilocks zone, not too many, not too less to be more equipped. So again, there is a lot of information here. That's it for the notes. There's a lot to learn. A little too long, as I said, there is a little too much details about rocks and, and volcanoes and earthquakes more than needed i think that's why he got a three but without that high three that would, would definitely get a four i would recommend that if you don't know enough about this inf about this about the earth you can you can learn some things out of it and that's it thank you